Can we once again raise our hands and thank God. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we want to say thank you so much for joining us to worship the Lord. May the Lord continue to bless us together. Uh, let's focus on our attention and to our theme. And this year, the Lord asks ask us to, uh, to focus on the theme, be faithful. God is expecting you and me to be faithful. And at the same time, as we said, you know, Joy Pastor has uh, mentioned it, and we also sang that why he wants us to be faithful, because we have a faithful God. And so that is the beauty. And he is not simply asking us to be faithful, because he is a faithful God. He wants his children to be faithful. Uh, that is a simple thing. And he will always remain and be faithful. As some brother was praying, you know, he cannot change his nature, right? If whether you change the nature, I change the nature, and the whole world change nature, he cannot change his nature. He's a faithful God. And he expects us to be faithful. Hallelujah. So, Micah chapter 6 verse 8, that is the, uh, the key text for us, you know, and we have been reading. And uh, so we don't have the time, and you can look in do that okay so god is expecting his people to be uh, to act justly to be to uh, to to be fair to be just and they need to be faithful and also they need to be humble before the lord that is god's desire okay we will as i said we'll come back to these words uh, at a later stage only and we are trying to understand you know the background and some other things and then we will come to this passage see last week you know when i think the first second week of uh, 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 probably you know the first week of this month you know i was talking about you now i just introduced the theme god wants us to be faithful because you know look into the, the the people of israel they were going through a very bad situation you see when micah was prophesying and he was ministering in judah the people of israel were going through a morally spiritually politically decline situation in that situation it is not so easy for any faithful people to live, right? In a bad situation, it is so difficult for faithful people to live, but other people it is easy, right? So today, many people find it very interesting to live, right? They enjoy the life, but who is groaning within the faithful ones and faithful ones are find that this world is not suitable for them and you see the faithful one feel the struggle within their heart lord it is getting worse and worse but the other people they enjoy like anything i mean you see that the faithful people always find struggle in a badly morally spiritually bad situation to live in that is the situation micah is going through okay so that then in that situation, Micah focused on a few things. The first thing he focused was to see his identity in Christ, in God, in God. So Micah focused, that is, the, you know, that is what is we have discussed last week. Micah was saying that, you know, this is bad, the situation is bad, politically, morally, spiritually, economically, every way it is bad. But my focus on, not on any of these surroundings, my focus is in, on me, my identity as an empowered person. You see, we need to understand, you no, know, you and me, as spirit tempered people, are one of our powerful identity. Right? If you and me are anointed by the Spirit of God, empowered by the Spirit of God, you and me are enjoying the same life of the triune God. Because the same Spirit lives in us. And that is what is we read that the same Spirit who rose Jesus from the dead will raise you up on that day. The same Spirit lives in us. And so we are overcomers. I mean, so that is what is we need. I want to encourage you again to live a spirit-filled life and to live as a spirit-empowered person, to live as a spirit-empowered family, to live as a spirit-empowered church that we can move ahead in even in the most, uh, I mean, uh, ba the worst situation, even the bad situation, we can move on. Okay, now, see, the first thing I said to focus on our identity as God's empowered people. The second thing, I mean, I mean, Micah is saying what we need to focus on. 
Okay, it is, as I said, it is so important. Last week I said that God is not interested in how the world is responding to him. But God is interested how his people respond to him. How his people think about him. How his people, I mean, I mean, view him. What is the perspective of God's people matter to God? What is the understanding of God's people matter to God? How God's people respond to the situation matter to God? But how the world, I mean, I mean, uh, the respond, the sin matter to God? And so we need to, when we, our response, focus on our identity in Christ. Not our social identity, not our, I mean, gender identity, not our, I mean, see, economic identity, not our ecclesial identity, but our identity in Christ matches the most. Our spiritual identity as matches the most. Okay, second thing, we need to focus on uh, God. Okay, that is the second point I want to talk about, you know, Mike is saying that in a in a dangerous situation or in a difficult situation, in a hard situation, focus on who God is. Focus on God's identity, who God is. See, and when in this particular, in this book, you can see one beautiful idea. You know, he is presenting. Shall we read Micaiah chapter 7 verse 8? Micaiah 7, 8. So not 8, 18. Micaiah 7, 18. Who is a God like you, mm. pardoning iniquity mm. and passing over the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in mercy. Thank you. Okay, so this is a beautiful, this is the last chapter. See, my case in one way, concluding. He's making a powerful statement in his conclusion. Right? He says that, who is a God like you? So he wanted to say that. I'll come to that word. Uh, Micah, you know, in, the, in, in this book we can see that, you know, uh, he is explaining about the unique nature of God. You know, this is something beautifully he pitches, the unique nature of God. He is incomparable God, you know. He uses various expressions in this book. Right? To talk about the unparalleled nature of God. Not one or two. So many. I was so, and I have never, to be honest with, with you, I have never picked up these pearls from Micaiah in the previous, I mean, years, you know. And I was trying to, you know, immerse and dwell into the book, you know. I was just enjoying like anything. You know, you see that when I see the beautiful nature of my God, unparalleled nature of God. And there are three particular major parts passages, you know, uh, we can see that. One is Micaiah chapter 2 verses 12 to 13. You know, we, we are not, I'm just saying it, you know, I'll focus uh, one by one later. I'll focus today uh, one only. Micaiah 2, 12 and 13. That is one passage he's talking about the unparalleled nature of God. Second, Micah is talking about chapter 3 verses 7 to 11. 3, 7 to 11. Another passage about the unparalleled nature of God. Then the third passage, Micah 7, 18 to 20, talking about the incomparable nature of God, who our God is. Okay, so Micah, in one way, he wanted to say that, you see that, uh, don't focus on ourselves. And Micah is aware of, fully aware of his insufficiency and inability as a human being, okay? And he also knows the limitation as a prophet. He knows the limitation as a minister to the people of Israel. He knows the limitation. But he says that my confidence is not in my ability. No, my confidence is not in my skill. My confidence is not in my experience. I, my confidence is on my God. And so he says that I focus on the incomparable nature of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, let's focus on chapter 2 verses 12 to 13 for today. And I'll focus on the first passage. And if the Lord speak, leads me, I mean in the weeks to come, months to come, maybe I will unpack the other passages as well. Micah 2, 12 to 13. Please read. I will, sh I will surely assemble all of you, O Jacob. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together like sheep of the fold. Like a flock in the midst of their pasture, they shall make a loud noise because of so many people. 
The one who breaks open will come up before them. They will break out, pass through the gate, and go out by it. Their king will pass before them with the Lord at their head. Okay, so then, in this passage, what we see that here, I mean, he's, you know, there, uh, see, the remnant of Israel. He's talking, Mike is talking to the people of Israel, very especially in exile, okay? This is the people in exile that we can see that he says that, I mean, he, is, he meant them. He meant that. God will gather the people who are in exile. And there, and now before I get into that, you know, the one term, remnant, you see? Remnant, okay? Repeat after me. Remnant. Don't forget. So what, you know, remnant is an important title, term, in the Old Testament to talk about faithful people of Israel. Okay, actually, remnant is not a spiritual. It was not a spiritual term. All right, in the Hebrew, it was not. A, it was actually a socio-political term. So, socio-political term means it was used to mean the people who are left over after a famine or a war. Okay, in the in a war, what will happen? The enemy will come and capture the all the powerful, the skillful ones, and only the feeble, the weak, and powerless will be left. Like lame people, women, children, the old ones. And they, they are, according to the enemy, they are useless. Okay, they are useless. The ordinary, they will be left out. And that group, you know, in socio-political term, I mean to that group. Another way, a famine. The rich people, may the able people will, will run and be saved. But the people who are not able to run, the feeble one will be left. To that group. This left out group, this feeble group were called as remnant in, you know, before the Old Testament writers were inspired by the Holy Spirit to use the term, this term was used. You know what happened? The Holy Spirit inspired the Old Testament writers to pick that term and to give a new meaning. You know what is the new meaning? You see, it means if you throw out the, the Old Testament, you can see that this is to talk about the faithful people. The faith, listen to me, the faithful people who are faithful to their nation Israel. They are faithful to their God Yahweh. And no matter, they go through the toughest situation. They go through the most difficult situation. They don't deny their king. They don't deny their nation. They don't deny their God. And that is why they are called as remnant. Okay, so that is what is we can see. Okay, for example, if you in the New Testament, it can be more clear about in the New Testament when you come to one verse, can we read uh, Romans chapter 9? Romans 9 27. Romans 9 27. Isaiah also cries out concerning Israel Though the number of children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, the mm -hmm. remnant will be saved. See, the remnant will be saved. The moment Jesus came on this earth, there is only one for salvation. All those who believe in Jesus will be saved. Whether you are a Jew or Gentile, whether you are a Malayali or a Hindi person, whether you are an English person or an Indian person, there is only one way for salvation. Okay. God has a different way for any city or any people. God, let God does that. My only point is that for salvation, there is only one means, that is Jesus Christ. Okay. So then, the, only the remnant will be saved. Okay. And no doubt about that is the truth. But my desire, our desire should be that, Lord, I want to be among the remnant. No, I don't want to be among the crowd, but I want to be among the remnant who will be faithful. Because what happens to them, they don't mind about it. And you see that, I mean, what happens to them, they don't care about it. And because, and they, I know, they may have to face death. That is true. They may have to go through the toughest situation. That is true. They may be drawn into fire. That is true. They may be drawn into the, in the sea. That is true. They may have to face sickness. That is true. They may have to face jobless situation. That is true. But they are faithful to the Lord. Because... All of the things are secondary for them and they are remnant. Okay, so that is remnant, okay? That is a pertain, the faithful. So let me tell you, in all generation, in all generation, God keep a faithful, a small group of people as remnant. That is the beauty, you know? In, if you look in tiny minority of people, right? Not all, a tiny minority 
faithful people in all generation they may be insignificant before the world they may be insignificant before the family they may not be i mean they may not have voice they may not have influence they may be powerless hallelujah but they are so dear to god because they hale are faithful to god even the most difficult situation and so they are dear to god the remnant in every generation are so dear to the heart of god and that is why god is talking i mean what god is to them okay now come back to micaiah and so then i mean micaiah says that so to this not to all but to this remnant who god is that is important okay so to this remnant god is important so i don't have the time to talk about i mean other things even though i wanted to talk about remnant so, um, a few more things you know i don't want to spend time let me just come to micah chapter 2 verse 12 to 13 my focus okay there i mean micah says that the lord i mean there we can see three particular thing who god is to the remnant who god is to the remnant we can see three important thing one god is the the shepherd to his remnant second god is the king for the remnant and three god is the advancer of the remnant okay god is the the faith is the is the shepherd and god is the king and god is the advancer i mean so i want to focus on this quickly i mean you see that and you know, um i see uh, can you read uh, maybe tall once again verse tall i will surely assemble all of you o jacob <laughs> i will surely gather the remnant of israel i will put them together like sheep of the fold like a flock in the midst of their pasture they shall make a loud noise because of so many people okay see what says that this is talking to the people in the exile the people of israel like sel god says that i will gather you may be in exile you know exile means in the enemy's camp okay enemy nation you may be in an enemy nation and you may be enclosed and you may be imprisoned you may be imprisoned by the powerful king but don't be worried about i am your shepherd as long as i am your shepherd i will lead you okay i am your shepherd i will lead you so then not he says that i will gather my sheep like in a shepherd and i will gather them in pasture and i will gather in pasture and not only that they will come out in noise right they will come out in noise but i know they cannot make any noise now because they are in exile they are in prison they are in jail and they are they are in silence and they have no voice they have no i mean they have no influence and they have no hope they are hopeless helpless hapless people i mean imprisoned people and you see no way out but god says that you know to remnant i'll be their shepherd and when i will lead them they will make noise you understand so i mean see now they cannot but when i lead them out hallelujah that's a beauty of god's people that is why god's people you know i mean you sp- they pray but in the new testament when you come even in the prison we see the remnant praise god like the so i mean paul and silas even in the prison they make noise even the prison they they shout even the prison they celebrate and you see that even the pres- prison they are overcome is they are not waiting for the deliverance but even the prison a new testament believer who is empowered by the spirit of god even though he is in a cage he is in a prison hallelujah he is in chain he is an overcomer hallelujah because god is their shepherd god is their shepherd you know this idea god as a shepherd we know that it is a very familiar thought in the, uh, the in in the in, in the bible and in the old testament we can see many times you know first time god of the shepherd is seen in the book of genesis it is expressed by jacob when he was giving his blessings to uh, to to joseph he mentioned that in twice we can see that in genesis 48:15 and genesis 49 24 maybe genesis 29 24 49 24 we can read 49 24 but his bow remained in strength uh-huh. and the arms uh, i mean while this is a, 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 the blessings of um, jacob to joseph okay joseph is blessing all his children this is jos jacob is sorry jacob is blessing joseph okay but his bow remained in strength mm. and the arms of his hands mm. were made strong mm. by the hands of the mighty god of jacob mm. yeah 
From there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. See, you see, then he says that the mighty one of, by the hands of the mighty one of Jacob, and from there means from the tribe of, right? From the tri that tribe will come the shepherd. Okay, so there, Jesus in one which he sees, you know, the stone of Israel. I mean, God is, Yahweh is described as the shepherd of Israel. Shepherd of Israel. You see, and, and then also we can see that many times even David understood that. Right? In the Old Testament, all the Old Testament I mean, saints understood God as their shepherd. David understood, and that is why David sang this song, right? Psalm 23, God is my shepherd. You see that even we can see another picture. When you come to, you know, uh, Moses. You know, God is calling Moses while he was a shepherd the sheep of his uh, uh, father-in-law Jethro, right? You see that in Exodus chapter 3, there he was shepherding the flock of his uh, father-in-law Jethro, then God is calling him to shepherd God's flock, the people of Israel, and to lead them out. You see that? Lead them out of Egypt, you know, to break them from the land of Egypt, to lead them I mean, God has called him as a shepherd. See, that is, let me tell you, I want to tell you, God himself is the shepherd for his people. No, we are only appointed, no, I, I, I always say that, you know, we are only taught as shepherds, you know, just, uh, but God is a great shepherd. God is the, 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 the good shepherd. And you see that in the New Testament, we see that Jesus, he said, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And Jesus is a great shepherd. In Hebrew, we read that he is a great shepherd. And you see that we have our own weakness because we have small appointed I mean shepherd I mean you see that the great shepherd and the ideal shepherd and the good shepherd is he himself hallelujah and he is a shepherd of all remnant dear children of God you need to talk to yourself always you know when you get time you see that when you think that there is no way to go uh, you have no leading you have no guidance you have no vision you don't know how to move and if you follow the great shepherd if you follow your shepherd he will lead you he has a way and he has a he knows where to take you he knows where to lead you he knows where to hallelujah to head you and let him at your heart let God be at the head of our community, our church, our family. And don't be worried. He will lead us because he is the great shepherd. Okay. Then second thing what we see that, I read, uh, he is the king, right? He is the king. Okay. Can, can I think, uh, can you continue reading that? Mike uh, 2, there we can see that he is, okay. Maybe 13, verse 13, well, verse 13. The one who breaks open will come up before them. Mm. They will break out, pass mm. through the gate, and go out by it. Okay. Their king will pass before them with the Lord at their head. Okay, we see that God as their king. See, God as the king, not all, all. God is the king of the Raman. God is the king of the remnant. This passage also can be, you know, in the, in, the, in the same book we can see that Mike is talking about the in, in incarnation of Jesus also, right? Jesus would be born in Bethlehem and all, you know, he's talking about. So this passage is not only meant for that particular time that God delivered the people of Israel from the, by the exile, but that also meant for us and that also meant for the future millennial kingdom when Jesus will rule the whole world as the king of kings and the lord of lords the great shepherd so jesus we know that you know we jesus is the is the shepherd king we need to understand that is the one of the most powerful idea we can see in the old testament god as a shepherd king and in jesus we know that he is a shepherd king and see that is what is our privilege that we become his followers i mean jesus is our shepherd king you see in exodus we know the story and and I don't want to take that verse. When you come to Exodus chapter uh, 13, 21, we see that when, you know, God was leading the people of Israel, say that, I mean, the Lord was before them. You see? The Lord was the, before them. The Lord went before them. You see? God is asking Moses that you were now, you know, uh, for leading and the, or shepherding and the flock of your father law but now I have a desire, I have my flock there, I want to be my, I mean, person as a, you know, an appointed shepherd to lead the people of Israel, but I, the great shepherd, will go before them, not you, Moses, 
but i will go before them you also follow me do you understand that is a beauty dear children of god never that's that's listen me never allow yourself to be the great shepherd of your children never 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 dad and mom never allow rather you be the appointed shepherd of your family and follow the lord if you follow the lord and the children also will follow you don't have to be worried right they will follow you you only need to train your children show them the way oh so god is talking to the parents right show them the way that you follow the great shepherd you are not you the small shepherd is not the leader of your house and show the way we as a family follow the great shepherd and show the way children son daughter follow the lord as i follow him now you follow me are you with me so that is what every pastor every leader of a christian community has to understand we i mean i mean humbly we as god's people god's servants we we acknowledge that we are not neither me or nor joy pastor the leader of the church and we follow the great shepherd our struggle is to see what is the next step the great shepherd is taking is he taking left is he taking right is he is he asking us to pause a while is he asking us to move we cannot take step in accordance with the people's opinion hallelujah and we need to closely follow the great shepherd and we have to make sure that is our fearful responsibility we should not take even a single step apart from the will of god because it is not our flock it is not our sheep we are not the owner there is someone who purchased the flock who paid the price he bought with his own blood and they are his property we are appointed shepherds we have to be very careful where the great shepherd is leading hallelujah that is our fear because the fearful responsibility is to make sure the where the great shepherd the one who 1321 where the great shepherd is going hallel before his flock before his people before his sheep the great shepherd is taking them leading them he designs a route he designs a map route he designs where to take he designs a destiny he designs see by words he uh, by roads uh, he leads the uh, highways uh, he leads the uh, mountains uh, he knows where to take it is he is taking it is his people for his purpose a people for his purpose hallelujah all of the people all of the leaders what will be our team we all have to follow one leader the great shepherd hallelujah he will take he will lead hallelujah the third third feature god says that show me he will he will open the bridge he will break through he will break through you know what is that third feature of god he is the advancer to the remnant he is the advancer to the remnant hallelujah you know what is the meaning of advancer so there i put advancer in a polish way the word used breaker the lord is the breaker to the remnant you know what is the meaning of rem- that the now i was took i was actually studying and i studying i was actually immersing for hours for the last two weeks to understand the word and it was so so powerful and at this morning in a very powerful way god ministered to me god ministered to me you know the breaker actually just one is in you know, one of the meanings that i mean it is you know like the action breaking means the action of breaking a powerfully fortified city you know a city that is fortified powerfully from the attack of the enemy and you see that then breaking that fortified city and you see and he will break through and you see that the king the you see then you know what happened this is normally listen me those who listen me and try to understand normally this is used for a military unit not all a military powerful military unit what is their purpose to break the fortified city of the enemy and that fortified city is made so that 
this people will be there safe and the enemy king will not come and attack not only that if an enemy i mean a captured prisoners are there the enemy king should not come and capture them back are you with me are you with me they should not come such is the imagery and that is it's a military unit but mike says that our trust is not in military unit our military unit is the great shepherd the royal shepherd and what he will do that he will break through he will break every fencing every powerful fortified hallelujah situations will be broken by hallelujah oh this great shepherd and it is not appointing a, a unit for that he is not appointing a unit he himself will break through he will break in even if his people are in the most fortified situation the people of israel okay they are in babylon powerful nation they are in egypt powerful kingdom god says that egypt pharaoh you think that you keep my people in fortified situation even if you strengthen your i mean fencing and your protection i will break in i will break in you may be you know god's people the remnant people may be in a powerfully enclosed situation but their god says that i will break in and gather my people i will break in and bring my people out and you see that and what he will do is that he will pass through the city gate that's the idea he will pass through the city gate you know i, I don't know how many of understanding i know so that i know i, I know only if you can and may be able to understand what i'm talking about you see that i will pass them through it is not through the back door it is not through, through, through secret doors i mean because he is the king the king shepherd will break in and capture his people collect his remnant and he will triumphantly pass through the city gate when he will pass through the city gate the people who follow they will make loud noise they will shout they will celebrate they will praise whom they will praise the king they will praise their king and king and they will come in because he is the breaker hallelujah the lord is the breaker who breaks in any situation and i will finish with one verse second samuel chapter 5 you see that you know when you look into there are couple of incidents i think you and me may not be understanding the breaker idea but the people of israel know that you know what happened in the history of israel we can see few incidents happen there god broke in god broke in the same word is used he broke in and delivered his people right you see that one example i mean 520 can you read please So David went to Baal Perazim and David defeated them there and he said the Lord has broken through my enemies before me like a breakthrough of water therefore he called the name of that place Baal Perazim See this is a context when David was surrounded out surrounded uh, surrounded by sorry surrounded by the Eli- Philistine an- army when the Philistine army surrounded out the people of Israel you see that God broke in like a flood and he deliver his people enemy was shattered and david name it you know bal perzim mean the lord who breaks he breaks out you know see was, the beauty is that you know god when god breaks listen me when god breaks in and delivers his people they break out through open doors in celebration are you with me hallelujah when god breaks in and he delivers the people of god break out in freedom and there is celebrate and they will shout praises and he delivers and 